great atmosphere as we welcome you to the start of the college football weekend. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit. West Virginia's 4 and 1. They'll give Virginia Tech a test. But let's talk about the Hokies for a second. If they win out, they probably control their own destiny to get another shot at the national title. And they have Michael Vick. When the last two games hasn't been his best, six turnovers, all of a sudden some adversity for him. Well, for the first time in his career, I had a chance yesterday to talk to Michael after practice. And he said, you know what, Kirk? For the first time throughout this year, I allowed the hype to get to me a little bit. He threw an interception against Temple. And from that point on, the rest of the game, he tried to create and make a big play every time he touched the ball. And he went on to have his worst game as a starter here at Virginia Tech. Now, he told me tonight he's going to go back to what he did last year. He's going to go back to allowing those big plays to come naturally, not trying to create those big plays every time he touches that football. It'd be a good test against a good West Virginia defense. Yeah, but you know he's going to score. Yeah, right? You right. know he's going to score. But now, speaking of scoring, let's take a look at West Virginia's offense. They're led by quarterback Brad Lewis. Now, Brad has had a bad hand. He still has led West Virginia to a 4-1 record. But watch out tonight. I wouldn't be surprised if old West Virginia didn't use a ball control offense, first and 10, do it again, and keep old Michael Vick on the sidelines. Why? They got a runner, and Avon Colborn, who's as good a football player as there is in the country. He had 133 yards against these guys last year. I would run the ball mm -hmm. and throw it deep against Tech and try to beat him. That is the game plan. <laughs> now, Dr. Jerry Punch, normally our fourth man on the crew. Doc is working auto racing. We are privileged to be joined by Michelle Tafoya, who was in Morgantown last year for that very close game, as tough a game as Tech had all regular season, Michelle. No question about it, Mike. West Virginia gave Tech its toughest battle of the season by a long shot. I mean, consider this. Tech outscored the rest of its opponents by almost 34 points a game. They go to Morgantown, and they barely eke out a win 22 to 20 with a last second field goal. Now, I spoke to Frank Beamer, and I asked him if he was using this as a motivational factor. He said last year's close call has nothing to do with this game, but he did acknowledge that West Virginia played much better than he expected, and he anticipates them to be even tougher this year. As for Don Nealon, he told me his team got a lot of motivational mileage out of that game. His defense in particular believes they shut down Michael Vick last season, actually made him look human. So the Mountaineers might come into this game unintimidated and very, very confident. They absolutely do, Michelle. We're in Morgantown this week, and they do feel confident about this game. If they ever made a night for football, this is it. There's no wind. It's 53 degrees. The leaves say fall. The air says fall. And so do the quality of the teams. Number two in the nation, Virginia Tech, won the toss, defers the option to the second half. So West Virginia will get the kick from Carter Orley. Sellout crowd at Lane Stadium. And we're underway on Thursday night football. Phil Braxton breaks across the 25. A flag is down as Braxton makes his way to the 28 yard line. Check the early flag. Jack Kramer's a nice man, but we hope we don't hear from him much tonight. He's the referee assigned by the Big East Conference. And the Mountaineers are going to have a long field to go to get started. Well, Brad Lewis will start at quarterback for West Virginia, a junior making his ninth start. Did not practice on Tuesday, practiced very little on Wednesday because of a hand injury. Up front with them, Lee talked about Avon Coburn, back from the ankle injury, Big East leading rusher last year. Wes Howers, a 290-pound fullback. Corey Ivey, a 6'3 game breaker. Antonio Brown has under 4'2 speed. And Sean Burton may be as good as the first round pick who left here last year, Anthony Beck at tight end. First down run for Cooper Rigo. And check it is Coburn. And he gets a couple of yards. Check those lines up front. West Virginia up front is bigly. Big. They got the biggest center in the history of football. <laughs> six foot six, 320 pound Rick Gilliam. And he's an NFL prospect. He's a good looking player. And it will go again to Virginia Tech defensive front. Beasley and Pugh, the two juniors, 94 and 71, solidifying a young, otherwise inexperienced group. After a pickup of five, it is second and five. And once again, they'll try last year's Big East leading rusher and no place to go for Coburn. And Defense of Virginia Tech there, led by Ben Taylor, one of the linebackers. 
along with Jake Hauswright and Nick Sorensen. Sorensen, the senior. Taylor, his play is coming on the last couple of games. In the secondary. Be interesting to keep an eye on number one, Eric Green. He is a freshman. He's very talented, but he's inexperienced. When I talked to West Virginia, Bill Legg, the offensive coordinator, said when they get a chance in one-on-one -on -one matchups, they're going to go after the freshman. They need five for the first down. Get right out to the ESPN first and ten line at the 28. Out of the shotgun, it's Lewis. Pass is incomplete. He was looking for Corey Ivey, who wants a flag, but none is coming. And it's a punt for West Virginia, and that has been a problem this year. Get ready. They've had blocked punts. They've had snapping problems. They've changed to B.J. Poonfield. He is now the snapper. It's helped the cause, but Virginia Tech's one of the best kick-blocking teams of all time. Have you ever heard a stadium come alive when the punt return team comes on? Mark Fasolori is the punter. Able to get one away, but you can see by the quality of the kick. He just wanted to get rid of it. Andre Davis will let it bounce, and it will work out just fine for the Mountaineers. Michael Vick will bring Virginia Tech on, starting from their own 24. Do you know he is the eighth-rated passer in the Big East? But he's the conference's fourth-leading rusher. Here's who helps him out. Lee Suggs has only found the end zone 11 times this year, second in the nation in scoring. Ferguson, the fullback, is a little banged up. Davis, the playmaker, maybe the home run ball for him tonight. Browning Wynn is a tight end who mostly blocks, but when he catches the ball, he usually makes first downs. Vic will go to the air for Davis right away. Andre made a man miss and picked up about 22 yards. You're going to see a lot of this tonight if the corners are going to play soft, which is what Richard Bryant does, number two. He gives him a soft cushion. It's going to give Michael Vick plenty of room to get the ball quickly thrown out to Andre Davis. And Davis has really developed as a receiver. He used to be a guy that would just catch the ball downfield in a straight line. Now he's developed the ability to make a catch and make people miss, as he did there with Richard Bryant. Great start for Vick and the Hokies. Michael's only completed just over 50% of his passes. Lee Suggs to the 45. Eight first down rushing yards behind that big offensive line that called itself this year the Secret Service because they have to protect the president. Well, that's, right, that's right, Mike. Anthony Lambeau, Matt Lair, Josh Redding, Dave Cadella. Four of those five have started now. Starting tonight, their 17th straight football game. Really, the strength up front is the experience. West Virginia's defensive front, technically three down line, but although you'll see them in four and five man looks at time, good against the run. They are 16th in the nation. No superstars in that front three, but solid players. After picking up eight, a toss to Andre Kendrick. Hurtling ahead for the first down. Sean Hackett, the strong safety, was trying to pull it out, but Kendrick ended up getting a few more yards. Let's check out those players in the back. Chris Edmonds is the best pass rusher, Lee, on the linebacking court. That number six, Grant Wiley, is the best freshman linebacker I've seen this year on tape. He can fly. He can intercept the football. Keep your eye on number six. He's a great prospect. Check the secondary. King, 11, is a freshman. Bryant, number two, is playing with an elbow injury. And Hackett, who just tried to make that tackle, spent a day in the hospital this week with a toe infection. Hokies on the move, and Michael's on the run. There it goes, Mr. Magnificent. Michael Vick to the 14. First and 10, Virginia Tech. When I talked to Michael yesterday after practice, he had a look in his eye. And sure, he hasn't played as well as he can. But I got to tell you, tonight, being on the scene in the nation, everybody watching, his peers, coaches, college football fans, he's excited to show everybody that he still has what it takes to be the best player in the country. Virginia Tech has been lethal in the red zone this year. Vic adjusting the play at the line from the 11. Lee Suggs gains about three yards. It's Kyle Caden, middle backer, with the stop. Well, previous play, Michael was back in the shotgun, and this is what he brings to an offense. Of course, he has the ability to sit in there, but right away, and this is the difference with Michael, right away, there's not a called play. He recognized the seam, 
took it up the middle, and of course, because of his ability, he has the speed to take it to the, all the way to the uh, to the end zone. I disagree with you. That was a lead blocker by number 27, Ferguson, who cut the linebacker down. I think it was a call play, dude. Yeah. Second and seven, Suggs stood up at the five. 45, Kyle Caden is a junior out of Fremont, Ohio. He is soft-spoken, but there's nothing soft about his play on the football field. 6'3 and 235, a nice stick. He knocks Suggs back. That'll be a good matchup tonight because, you're right, Caden is not afraid to get up there and hit people, and Lee Suggs has developed. We'll talk about him throughout the, the evening. Not only his speed, but his power. He loves to run between the tackles. Kyle Caden is such a leader. He's only the third junior ever to be named captain of West Virginia. Antoine Lake thought he saw movement from the offensive lineman. If it is against West Virginia, it'll be half the distance to the goal. Still shy of that first down. Outside. Defense. Half the distance to the ball line. Still go down. Third and about a yard and a half for a Virginia Tech offense that is just grinding people with the run. 304 rushing yards per game. That with the points over. Both are third in Division 1A. This is where Michael's dangerous as an athletic quarterback down inside this area. Goes straight with the carry, Suggs, and he will be stopped. Looks to be short of the first down. Remember we told you the Mountaineers are good, 16th in the nation against the run. They have fourth down and a decision for Frank Beamer early. Well, I think old Frank will go for the touchdown. Yep. He'll go for the kill. Well, he, get can this get down, he can still get a first yeah. down, Lee. He can still get a first down with uh, a gain of a yard. Yeah, he'll go for it. He will not kick the field goal. Be surprised if they if they wouldn't give Michael the option here. Let him use his, his ability. Straight ahead run. Lee Suggs, touchdown, Virginia Tech. And the offensive line pays off as they ran it over the left side. Carter Worley on for the extra point. And a very nice starting drive for Virginia Tech. Eight plays, 76 yards. We're going to watch number 69, Matt Lair, number 59, Anthony Lambeau, lead him through the huddle. You're going to win the football game. You win it up front. This is the worst thing that possibly could happen to West Virginia. Right at the first down marker, just a yard shot. Channing Reed made the play for Virginia Tech. Third string defensive lineman, seeing some snaps. Interesting note here. Kirk, you said before that first down was very important. Notice they got five yards, and now they got a chance to get a first down. They got a chance on second down exactly. because it was second and five. Right. Yeah. It doesn't allow Virginia Tech to be so aggressive. It makes them come back a little bit. Around the move, man. The fullback, Wes Hours, oh, first down. Big guy. <laughs> 290 pound senior, Wes Hours keeps the drive alive. And this game that several times had a complete chance to fall apart for West Virginia. They're back in it and driving now. It reminds me of a boxing match when one guy's so much better than the other guy, and he's about to knock him out, and he can't knock him out, and the other guy's coming back now. I mean, there's no comparison to these two football teams. Well, in the first quarter. it's early in the game. I think the fact that West Virginia kind of weathered the storm yeah. and the crowd and all the momentum favoring Virginia Tech, they put themselves by catching a break now in a position to, at the very least, try to be able to get some points on the board here. And they've kept the big act at the carnival on the sidelines. Little fake and then a hand. Oh, he's got blockers. Avon Cooper sure does to the 12. Kevin McAdam, reserve DV, playing because of injuries in there, but a nine-yard pickup. This is an old Statue of Liberty play. This is it's like 600 years. This, this is, is going, going back, back when your dad and I coached. Right. Right. He fakes it, then he gets 
the Avon, the ball, it was a fake pass, and then he comes around in, and old Tanner Russell, the captain, look at him knock that guy, number 14, Nick Sorsen down. Nice play by Tanner Russell, 79, the right offensive tackle. Well, he fired up on the Statue of Liberty. From the 12, second and short. Coburn, first down. First and goal, West Virginia. I like to see Matt Wilson and Terry Dixon, a left guard and a left tackle. When I talked with Bill Legg this morning, their offense quarter, he said the left side of the line is more athletic. We'll pull them. We'll do some things with them. We've kind of had to teach them how to be tougher. Whereas the right side's that, that side where if it's third and two or three, we need that short yard, we'll go behind them. But they're getting behind these big offensive linemen and running the running back, whether it's a screen or a, or a counter. It's very nice. First and goal, Mountaineers trying to add a time touchdown on Thursday night football. Steady die to the Big East leading rusher in 99. Avon Coburn, touchdown, West Virginia. Oh, you guys can't believe it. Here's my boy, Wes Hours. Six foot one, 700 pounds. Right here, the right. Watch the fullback number 40. I had dinner with him Tuesday night, he ate six dinners. Watch him, boom, oh! I told him I'd make look good on television, he sure did. Yeah, you made him look good, 700 pounds, you called him. That's 700 pounds. You, you know what, you know what, something, he started last year in this game as an offensive lineman against Virginia Tech. As a guard, now a fullback, John Oliger adds the extra point, 290 pounds. Look at that, program man. Look at him. Let me tell you something, I promise you he had Two dinners. Oh, he he had barbecue he ribs. Oh, he God. had chicken. Look he him. had dessert. Oh. And he had all my friends. Oh, no. Look at him. What a player, Wes. Oh. All right. <laughs> Tied at seven here in Blacksburg. Well, Don Nealon wanted his offense to play smarter. They may not be playing smarter, but they're certainly playing with more enthusiasm. After the Avon Coburn touchdown, the offense came off of the field, and the offensive line coach, Dave McMichael, turned to his line and said, Great job. We're in good shape now. Keep doing what you're doing. Back upstairs. Thank you, Michelle. They are in good shape. Michael and Bill Legg, the offensive coordinator, share the offensive line coaching duties. And that offensive line led that last drive. Nice hiding the ball. And a pass to Lee's guy, Wes Hours. Let him go to midfield and to the 46 oh. yard line. Nathaniel DB was trying to knock it out from behind. Right, right now, if we were picking a star of the game, Oh, Wes Hours has got to be the star. Just don't limp, Pixar. 6'1", 290. Watch it. They throw the ball to an offensive guard. He's just at number 40. Nice fake to the right. Hits Hours. And look at this maneuverability. And he's even holding the ball in the left hand. They try to strip it. Look at it. You hey, call I'm this I'm telling you. Look at it. He is an athlete for his size. 6'1", 290. Now he's not going to run. A, they say he runs a 4'8", legitimate 4'8". Kirk, his left side is 290. <laughs> Believe me. They're killing him. From the Hokie 47. <laughs> you won't believe it. His of all the things I just told about him about being player of the game, O.S. moves too fast. And they get a penalty. Here it is. Take a look at O.S., a number one guy right there. All right, Wes, kill him. Nah, a little bit before. <laughs> That's all right. Wes Hours, senior. He had the highlight of the game, ceiling drive that I talked about a moment ago against Maryland with the 39-yard reception. Wes is the parent of an eight-month-old. Eight yep. He's telling us that he enjoys getting up at night for the feedings. Diapers, the full deal. Tough to communicate with this noise. Nice job of execution, Corey Ivey. Their stud receiver. Picks up 10. First catch for Corey Ivey. Corey Ivey, one of the more consistent receivers in the Big East. Hard worker, he's very quick off the ball. And again, this is just Brad Lewis checking at the line, taking advantage of a soft corner and getting it to the guy that he knows he can count on every time to be in the right place. Ivey is 6'3", 195 pounds out of Boca Raton, Florida. Very, very effective player. Corey just set a school record, 34 consecutive games of the reception. New Big East record, but Reggie Wayne of Miami has 33. He can stay step for step with Ivy in that record the rest of the season. Cooper Rigo is tied up by 
Jake Housewright and Nick Sorensen on a second and six. These linebackers are playing well. Sorensen, who's like Wes Hours, has been on both sides of the ball and a yo-yo during his four years in Blacksburg. Number 28, Lamar Cobb, did an inside from the defensive end. He did an inside move, and he forced the back to make a move, and that's why those linebackers made a good play. We'll let you listen to the crowd here for third and eight. Each team, two timeouts remaining. 4.46 to go. Don Nealon looking for win 200. A victory over number two in the nation. As we mentioned, a picture-perfect night on this glorious campus here in Blacksburg, Virginia, 40 miles southwest of Roanoke. Third and eight, needing to get to the 37 for a first down, and out of the shotgun. The screen is going nowhere. Cooperigo, that was read by Chad Beasley. Keep an eye on Chad Beasley right here. Watch how quick he recognizes this. Look at him reading the back from the get-go. That's called knowing your scouting report and knowing the tendencies of an offense. He went there almost before Rigo went out there to catch the ball. Hunt blocker earlier in the game, Lee Suggs. Fazalori. Looking at 10 at the line. Peeled back. Davis, short catch at the 13. Flag is down. 41 yard line and bring this one back Virginia Tech ran into the punter I believe this will be five yards again Lee oh, Suggs oh, trying 15, to get in there they're 15, gonna go 15 personal foul wow this will be this is Lee Suggs gonna come right through here he blocked one earlier this time tries to come around he's kind of thrown into the punter and that's why you thought it was right. It's still a penalty if you're blocked in. Remember, we had that last year. Yeah, we had that big discussion about it. If you're blocked in, sometimes people will feel it should be just running into the kicker. I think your first call was correct. Yeah, I, oof. But we had that discussion. Yes. And it's discretion of the referee. Right, right. Which makes but me nervous. But if you're blocked in, it's not. you're not trying to get to him on purpose. And, but it was the discretion of the rest of the referee. Remember we had that discussion? Yes, we did. <laughs> remember it very well. And you brought out the rule book and everything. You killed me with the rule he, book. He got him with the rule book. That was a couple weeks ago. No, a year. Last year. He brought the rule book again last year. Yeah, what, two weeks ago. What was that about? Yeah, but he killed me last year with that same play with the rule book. Oh, okay. The rule book's always here. And special teams, which is the hallmark for Virginia Tech, is biting the Hokies here a little bit tonight. Tied at seven, and the Mountaineers get the ball back in great field position again. Avon Cooper. Last time they got the ball because of a special team's quote mistake, unquote. Second and six. Play pass for Cooper. Wide open down the middle. Sean Burton, the sophomore tight end, to the 12 yard line. First down, not nears. 17 yards and Lewis is hitting his stride guys well a lot of it has to do be this play has to do with because West Virginia's success running they're gonna fake the counter coming back because of the success of the play look at the defense go all over there look at how much time Lewis has to look downfield and find Burton wide open he has all day it's because of the effective uh, running game of West Virginia especially off the counter play Lewis has hit eight of his last ten passes after starting one for seven Remember, he missed practice all week because of the hand injury. Not much there as Coburn is stretched out by Nick Sorensen. It's been surprising that West Virginia has been able to have some success running the football. They bring the man in motion, and once they go to the backside, this is the same action, exact same action that they've had success with. And how often do you see a quarterback against that Virginia Tech defense get to the outside with nobody in his face? It's a different team. 
defensively. Drive kept alive by the roughing the kicker penalty. Two tight ends, one receiver. Looking for that one receiver, Brown, and stands hours. Going over people to the four. <laughs> Poor freshman. You know what? Eric Green, oh, he's so big that they let him go out in the flat because they think they can't throw the ball to a guy that big and that fat. But he catches the football. Look, he is. He catches the ball like an athlete. Wes Howard is an athlete. Does. He's not fat. He's he not is fat. fat. He's he weighs, just powerful. He weighs more than 300 pounds. I had dinner with him two nights ago. I heard that. But oh. I tell you one thing. I love this guy because of his competitive match. Look at him. Number 40. He's not fat. Low center gravity. He's a 4x4. Four four. Look at that stomach. Two for the first down. Four for the go-ahead touchdown. He'll throw it. He's got a man. And for the first time this year, Virginia Tech trails. Sean Burton, the sophomore, the touchdown grab. The Mountaineer Maniacs are making a ruckus. John Oliger for the extra point. West Virginia, 14. Virginia Tech, 7. And Lane Stadium is stunned. Sean Burton, number 81, is from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Bob ne uh, Don Nealon told us that this kid is an NFL prospect, Kirk. He's a tremendous football player because he's got good size, 6'5", 255. Again, the Virginia Tech defense is on their heels. The play action, the same play action that worked for him earlier. Look how open. Yep. Burton is, and look how the quarterback, Brad Lewis, has nobody in his face. Tell me that this guy who was expected maybe not to play, how fired up is he right now? One point we made a little while ago was like two heavyweights. One guy was so much better in the first three or four rounds, knocked him down seven times, but didn't knock him out. The other guy gets up and pow, 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 out, pow out. Pretty soon he's got the other guy on the ropes. I'll tell you what, this guy right here, Brad Lewis, showing a lot of courage tonight. The, the numbers aren't crazy the 100 yards throwing but his leadership the guts that he's demonstrated here in the first half the guy didn't take a snap all week and yet he's going up against one of the better defenses in the country and looking very good every time we talk to a coordinator during the week what do we hear good arm good mobility throws the deep ball throws it. i didn't hear one comment about his arm i had to pass seven times all they said was tough guy tough leader guy. That is great. intense they'll jump off a bridge for him bill leg i asked him the exact same question I said, here's his quote well, i said what's his strength he said his strength his toughness. That, that's what it. Forget the arm. Forget his. his he, he, he makes good decisions and he's tough. He's a he's, competitor. He said two words to me. Blue collar. Yeah. Remember? He yep. described him as blue collar. He said his whole team is blue, <laughs> blue collar. But yeah, but this quarterback. Court, how many quarterbacks you find are blue collar? No. Nope. And one of the examples of that, he works with the linemen and the linebackers in the weight room. He's in there with those guys. It's Eastern Ohio kid. Tough kid. Big taken by the blocking back who is the fullback. His pins at the 30. Two timeouts for Michael Vick of the Hokies. Here's one quick tackle by David Carter on Andre Davis. Here's Michelle. Well, Mike, from the time Michael Vick last came off the field to the moment he walked back on, he's been on the sidelines, on his headset, talking with offensive coordinator Ricky Bussell. Not for a moment did he take off that headset. From time to time, assistant coaches and players on the sideline would walk by Vick, give him a thumbs up or a fist pump, offering whatever visual encouragement possible, Mike. Good stuff, Michelle. Michael Vick talking with the coaching staff about the second and seven that's coming up for Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech facing a second down as we come back with 43 seconds left in Blacksburg. The number two team in the land, 5-0, taking on the 4-1 Mountaineers, but for both teams. A very familiar game. For who's supposed to win doesn't matter as much as it might otherwise. Vic trying to run for the first down. Gets there and gets out of bounds at the 40 one yard line are you guys surprised at what we're seeing here very surprised especially the way the game started virginia tech took their first possession 
it went the uh, length of the field about 74 yards for a touchdown and since then they haven't been able to do anything on all of, on offense got to give a lot of credit to West Virginia for kind of weathering the storm and coming back and getting a few breaks and taking advantage of them. when we talked to the West Virginia players Tuesday I had a sense that they were not going to be intimidated and that is exactly the way they're playing now first and ten one timeout left for Michael Vick Wiley, the freshman with a heavy hit on Vic, who went down in a heap and slowly gets up. First West Virginia sack. West Virginia feeling pretty good right now on defense, and this young man right here is eventually oh. going to be a superstar for the, this defense. He already is as a freshman. Grant Wiley able to slip through a crack there. He gets a lot of pressure. That's his third sack of the year. Clock didn't stop. Vic was slow to get up, and Virginia Tech is just going to get out of here. For halftime. West Virginia goes out with some momentum and the lead. And they should feel good defensively because for the first time this year, Virginia Tech played a quarter and didn't score. Virginia Tech gets the ball to start the second half, but number two, a three touchdown favorite, trails by a touchdown. The first half has been a microcosm of 2,000. Michael Vick's team trails by seven, but the West Virginia players know just because they got him for 30 minutes, it's going to be even tougher the next 30 minutes. Just like you going out chasing rabbits, just like a rabbit. It's hard to catch. It's hard to catch because a rabbit can turn on a dime and he can cut on a dime. It's just, he's just so elusive. And we just have a team. We just have to like put a net around him, just squeeze it in, just like if you're catching fish fish out in the water. We just have to get that net around him, just squeeze it in. The game plan has worked thus far for West Virginia. They've held Michael Vick and company to 149 yards. It's a team that averages 449 per game because the Mountaineers were able to take advantage of Virginia Tech's mistakes, keep the ball, score on its last two possessions. Virginia Tech gets the ball to start the third quarter, but that man, Brad Lewis, has been the quarterback story thus far tonight. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, Michelle Tafoya for Jerry Punch, as Doc is off covering racing this week. Jerry, we miss you. Have a great week in Alabama. You know you're sitting back enjoying this game tonight. Touchback as Kendrick lets it go through the end zone. A lot of people on this uh, press box surprised at what is going on. What do you see in the second half here, boys? Well, first of all, I think West Virginia's got to continue to run ball control, try to keep Michael, Michael Vick on the sideline, throw boot action passes, and kind of hang in there. I think that's a great call. I think for Virginia Tech, they have the ball right now. they got to get their, their confidence back. I think they had the confidence early in the game, and then they lost it. They've kind of been a little bit mixed up and, and I think confused offensively. Very important for Vic to get his confidence back and the offense in general to get it back. They looked great at the start of the game. Walked down the field, impressive touchdown. Since then, they've only averaged 15 yards per possession. A little play action with Vic on the run. And the lefty fires to the 37 where Emmett Johnson made the catch. Here's Michelle Tafoya. Well, Mike, I spoke with Frank Beamer at halftime, and he really feels that outside of the mistakes his team made, what they've been doing overall has been fine. He added that West Virginia is doing some things offensively they didn't see on film, but he said all good teams are going to trail at some point during the season. He's hopeful that his team will respond like a great team and overcome the deficit, Mike. And this first drive would be a great place to do just that. That's a great point, Michelle. Really, the first time this team has been behind without all their leaders they had from a year ago. Vic left the mouthpiece in the face gear. The freshman, Grant Wiley, able to chase down Michael Vick. That Grant Wiley was the best-looking freshman I've seen on tape all this year. I don't care where we've been. Why'd you say that? Because I watched him move. He can. He's quick. He intercepted the ball twice last week. He's got great hands. He's 6'1", 230. They say he's going to be even better every single game. The guy's a great prospect. Mark that name down. Grant Wiley. Not only great ability, but a great feel for the game. You can see the, the closing speed there, but he has a great feel, great vision as a linebacker. Second and ten. Vic adjusting the play. He subs the tailback. He scored earlier. The flag came right to the spot that is almost always offensive holding. Thrown by the umpire. Penalty six on Virginia Tech.
Home Depot coaching adjustments. One of the first things you tell a coach or tells a player like Andre Davis, once it starts bouncing, forget about it. Or if it bounces up, jump on it. Don't try to pick it up. Next thing, salts on this one, Kurt. How do you like this? I don't know. Well, he got pushed into I him. It's, it's debatable whether or not it's 5 or 15. I agree with you 100%. I think that 15. should have been a five-yard penalty. By rule, it had to be a flag, even though he's blocked in. Right. But it should have been a five, not a 15, running into instead of roughing the kicker. Perfect. Holding penalty makes it second and 19. In the pocket. To the tight end, Bob Slokowski ahead of the field. Can he ever run the defense? Touchdown! career touchdown and by far his longest reception as a Hokie 72 yards Carter Worley to tie the game at 14 this is why Virginia Tech gets so frustrated offensively Slokowski is right here simply gonna go right up the middle of the field there is not a safety in the middle the linebacker's got to be able to stay with him. You can see the safety come over. Initially, I thought the ball was the number 88, Andre Davis, <laughs> coming across the middle. But Michael knew exactly what he was doing. He threw the ball over the top and put it right there for Slokowski. Now, watch this. The reason this is a great throw is because the receiver's able to catch the ball on the run and continue to move forward. He breaks that one tackle, and then the rest is history, but a great throw there by Michael Vick. And for all the NFL scouts are out there, this is sitting in the pocket and throwing a ball straight. Didn't you think it was, yeah, it looked like it was going across I to Davis, and I said, oh, man. <laughs> and I thought there was no chance Lukowski would make it to the house, but Michael Vick has seen 87 run before, and thanks the offensive line, Anthony Lambeau and company, for giving him time to sit in the pocket and complete his fourth career touchdown pass of over 70 yards. Talk about a relief for this offense. Slokowski, who had a grand total, he really was a pass-catching threat in this offense after that one pass he caught against Boston College this year. That was his only catch until tonight. Tie game at 14. Terry takes it out to the 26-yard line. Brad Lewis and the Mountaineer offense scored on its last two possessions. As a football coach and as a head coach of the game, I've always felt that the first six minutes of the game and the first six minutes of the second half right. is very important to set the tempo. It's very important, Kurt, now that West Virginia answer with something. I was going to say, especially the first six minutes, especially after your opponent scores yeah. quickly like that to get the momentum swung in their favor. Now here comes this crowd, too. They were bewildered seeing their team trail at home. They run with Avon Colborn. First down, 13 yards is Raniel Whitaker, the nephew of the boxing champion, Sweet Pea Whitaker, pushed him out of bounds. I'm, I'm going to show you why this play was successful. It's an unbalanced line. There's more linemen on this side than there is on the other side, and you notice Virginia Tech slides the line that way and allows Coborn a chance to move to the outside. That was a perfect play of running to the short side away from an unbalanced line. They've taken advantage right now of getting the, bouncing the ball to the outside, whether it's a planned bounce play or a cutback or a counter play. They've had a surprisingly some success kicking the ball to the outside. Tackles are playing as well as anybody on the Virginia Tech front seven. Pugh just out, oh, just really overpowers here. Watch him come through the middle. 
Yeah, Matt Wilson and Terry Dixon in slide protection. And, and I'll tell you, David Pugh just simply used sure power to slide through that seam and to come up with a the pressure there to bring down the quarterback, Brad Lewis. Here come the home fans for second and 17. to lead the charge. 94 is Chad Beasley. Third and long coming up. Look at that helmet. Banged up, scarred up, picked up. Defensive tackle. This is a play that the running back would love to have back. He should have bounced this the way they've been bounced. Look at the lead blocker with ours. He had a guard out front. And the linemen that were out front, there was nobody else out there. He had Terry Dixon who the tackle Q3 on the prior play for the sack. They need to get to the 49. You see where they have to go for the first down. Flag, delay of game. No play. So for the second time today, West Virginia will get another shot at a third down. Prior to the snap. Yeah. I try a quick kick on this, this third and long. <laughs> Don Nealon looking for a win 200 in his career. 21st season as the West Virginia head coach. It was one of his assistants who said, other than Robert Byrd, the great U.S. Senator from the state of West Virginia, no other person has been as important in the late 20th century to the state than Don Nealon. He's given the state a personality, a galvanizing factor in this football team. He's been such a booster nationally for the state of West Virginia. Boy, you don't want to have to audible at the line with this crowd. Antonio Brown, that almost went the other way with an Eric Green interception. Kirk, it almost looked like Virginia Tech called off the blitz after Lewis changed the play at the line. That's exactly right. They kind of baited him there. They showed him a, a line, a, uh, an alignment initially at the line of scrimmage, and then as soon as he made his check, they snapped out to something else. And he went to the quick game, which is surprising on third and about 18. Fasolori to kick to Andre Davis. Ten Hokies waiting to come after him. Davis has been a little shaky, only gets a couple of yards on the return. Michael Vick coming off the long touchdown pass, back on the field, tie game. They've been playing football in Lane Stadium, capacity's 55,000 now. They're gonna put a double deck on the end zone in the south end to make it 70,000 in a couple of years. And you can call that the house that Frank and Mike built. Frank Beamer's success and Michael Vick taking this program to the next level. Took them to the end zone with the last drive. And his coach sends him back out. A 14-14 game. First down throw for Vic. Incomplete. David Johnson hasn't been able to shake free tonight. Michael's been able to recover here in the second half, and uh, there he just missed the pass. He's two or three, but in the first half, he had his problems. Here, early in the game, trying to score a touchdown. He fumbles the football. Watch the hit he takes by McIntyre on an option. And again, missing open receivers. He's missed a couple of open receivers in this football game. He's been able to come back early so far in the second half and look pretty good. His stats haven't been eye-popping for the season. Just his explosiveness and explosive plays. Lee Suggs. First down at the 35. Very nice hard run for the sophomore. Lee Suggs is a great story. You know, last year, we talked about how he, he missed a chance to be a part of a great team and a great run last year. And 
He worked hard in the offseason. Because he missed last year, he said it helped him kind of rededicate himself and go back to being committed to the game and love the game more. And he put on some weight, about 12 pounds. He runs a 4-2-7. So now it, not only does he have the great speed, but he's got great power. And he compliments Michael Vick and these talented receivers very, very well. Outstanding freshman linebacker Grant Wiley just ran off with an injury. Corey McIntyre comes in. There's the man Kirk was, Kirk was talking about. Suggs takes it to the 38. Just picked up a couple. In. And while you were talking about Suggs, we saw a shot of the West Virginia quarterback, Brad Lewis. They're working on his hand. You can see the trainer and Lewis squeezing his hand and working on it. If you weren't with us earlier, Lewis did not practice earlier this week because of an injury to that right hand. And he banged against Boston College in the season opener, re-aggravated a couple of times as the season went on. Didn't practice Tuesday, barely practiced Wednesday. Vic trying to escape the world. They will say incomplete. Vic was out of the pocket. But you know what? I don't think the ball crossed the line of scrimmage. Has to go out, out of bounds, beyond the line of scrimmage. Which was the 38-yard line. I think that should be a flag, guys. 38's the line. Ball has to cross the 38. He's out of the pocket so he can throw it away. Ooh, close. Very close. Be third and seven. Let's not forget the West Virginia defensive effort. They wouldn't let Michael do the uh, spinorama and get away from the line there. They bring the heat. Andre Davis first down at the 45. 17-yard pickup. I want to show you why this play was a great play because of the pass protection. Watch the backs step up right there. Boom. Subs picks up one, and he picks up the linebacker, Kirk. That's why the play was open. Yeah, it was open there, but McIntyre still got to Vic. But look at the look at the reception here by Davis. Ball's thrown behind him. And keep in mind, Michael Vick's throwing those radio balls where you can hear him and you can't see him. And behind him, he makes a big catch. First down toss with Subs. Eight yards before four Mountaineers bring him down. We talked about Andre Davis, the junior from Niskayuna, New York, he is our Circuit City Scholar Athlete of the Week. We won GPA in residential property management. Maybe after his NFL days, he'll be owning some uh, homes, apartments, condos, renting them to you. Real estate. So say a nice thing about him. Maybe he'll give you a deal on a house at some point. In Blacksburg. Andre Davis, who last year hit the home run ball, 27 yards a catch. 11 this year. Fullback carry. Jaron Ferguson for the first down. Off his pins by a fellow 27, Rick Sherrard. But a couple of yards too late. Nice drive here from Virginia Tech trying to retake the lead. Mixing things up very well here offensively. Mixing the run with the pass. Trying to slow down West Virginia's aggressive defense. Ricky Bustle, the offensive coordinator coach, seems like they have a rhythm now, Kirk. He's going inside, outside, quarterback, fullback, tailback. Nice rhythm by Ricky Bustle. Reverse with the Speedy Davis. Michael. Touchdown. done that this season but the lead is taken by getting it in the hands of the speed man 
Andre Davis atones for his mistake on the punt earlier. A 30-yard touchdown. And the Hokies lead again. Hours on third and one. First down, Mountaineers. When we talked to Bill Legg, the offensive coordinator, I remember asking him if it was short yardage, will you run a quarterback sneak? He says, I got a fullback that weighs 290 <laughs> pounds. I got a left guard that weighs 315 pounds. You figured out, Lee Corso. And I said, good call. And here it is. Even without Watch. the lead blocker. Right? Without the Does lead this blocker. this go against the golden rule? No. The we guy, have 290 in the backfield. No, you go against the Let me the tell you something. The guys are so big, they are a lead blocker. Okay. Right. Those two guys together. Saying. Wait a minute. Just Those saying. two guys are... 612 pounds. It goes, Go. against, it goes against the rules. Go. That's a, you know, the lead blocker. Right? They're, they're so big they don't need a lead right. blocker. Yeah. First and 10, West Virginia. Nice drive here. Lewis is looking deep. For Antonio Brown, incomplete. Corey Bird, the rover, was right there with him. Good play. Bird's a senior out of New Jersey. Corey Bird is a great player, and the thing that you have to appreciate here, he is a rover trying to play man coverage against Brown, who runs a legitimate 4-1-8. And when you run a 4-1-8 and you're a rover, you're not supposed to be able to stay with a wide receiver. That was pretty impressive. I'd like to see that 4-1-8. I swear by it. I've seen one guy run a 4-1-8. Who's that? Joseph Scott Galloway. Seattle Seahawks from Ohio State. Wide receiver, then the Cowboys injured his knee this year. Joey Galloway, Avon Coburn. We carry for three. It'll be third and a long six. I've had some guys run a four with eight, but not 40 yards. <laughs> 38 yards. <laughs> I mean, a 40 yard dash at 418 is literally flying. Oh. We haven't seen any screen passes to Antonio Brown yet tonight. One of the good pieces of this offense. Two tight ends, one receiver, 37. A run on 37 with Colburn, short side. And it's fourth down. Again, trying to bounce it to the outside. Interesting call there. You got to wonder if they're thinking four down territory here. Mm -hmm. Just try to pick up as many yards as you can to put them in a position where they're fourth and short have to be. You wouldn't run short no. side against Virginia Tech's defense on third and seven. Think you're going to make it, right? But they did have, they've had a lot of success bouncing that play out there with that lead blocker. All right, let me give you the other side of the picture. Okay. If they could just punt that ball down inside the 10, I know they're not going to, maybe they'll make a mistake because if Virginia Tech gets this ball and stops them, they're going to go touchdown. Mark it down on your calendar. Well, they've done it their first two drives. Yeah, that's what I said. Fourth and three, Lewis will throw. He's pressured in trouble. Incomplete. And the Hokie defense stands tall. And after West Virginia went for it on fourth down, it's good field position for Michael Vick and the Hokies. Michael's loading up and looking long. away from making that play all year. He said, hang with it. You'll hit it. <laughs> hang in there. Last year, that was the play that Virginia Tech fans fell in love with. Finally, they hit it. Worley, who missed the last extra point, adds this one, and the lead is 13 on the third touchdown in as many drives. 72, 30, and 64. He gets one-on-one -on -one matchup to the outside. Even though Bryant's West Virginia's best corner, this is one of those things where he is throwing it as far and as high as he can downfield. <laughs> Andre Davis, he took a face mask, both hands, everything he needed to catch that football. And look at the relief on Michael Vick. He knows about the pressure on the outside. He knows how people are questioning him and about all the hype. Is he receiving too much? You can see that 
how much this means to him to be able to throw the ball downfield. We talked about it in a pregame show. Well, West Virginia's philosophy was going to try to keep them all inside and eliminate the big plays. Well, the big plays have now just destroyed them. They played very well until they allowed the long touchdown pass and the long. That's why they're getting beat now. They should have let them make them drive the football. Well, when you play that kind of coverage, oh, when you man. drop eight men in the box, you get the safeties up. Lee, you know that you're going to be you're going to be vulnerable outside yep. on the outside against man coverage. And this half, Michael Vick's been able to take advantage of it. You talk about a difference in halves for a, for a quarterback. And the team, most of it's been Michael. Those long touchdowns. Continuing Michael Vick's trend of big plays for touchdowns. Phil Braxton for West Virginia. He took it out to the 28 yard line. Just like that, 20 points in 11 minutes. Michael didn't make a whole lot of plays in the first half. In fact, made a few mistakes, missed some receivers, four of ten. In the second half, he's four of eight. But 170 yards and the two big touchdown passes. You have to believe now, West Virginia's defense, the style of defense that they play, this game is still very early. You know, Michael's probably got a few more tricks up his sleeve. That ball traveled a good bit in the air. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think you have to question the arm strength. No. <laughs> you get it there, can you? <laughs> He can get it there. And now Brad Lewis and the Mountaineers, as Kirk said, can't get away from what they've done to get here. Little option, big stick. Willie Pyle, the sophomore, free safety. One of the things West Virginia's got to do is be careful not to try to answer too quick and do something stupid, and then they're never going to win this game. They're only 13 down which that extra point could be the difference. If they could take the ball, drive it down nice and easy, keep yeah. Michael Vick on the sideline, get a touchdown, and go into the fourth quarter and put a little pressure on them, they're not out of this game yet. No. Part of the problem is that defensive unit. Michelle was telling us from the sideline during the break how beat up they are. We'll check on that when they go back out on the field. Cooper Rigo carries to the 38-yard line. They're not out of this game yet, but they need something to change the momentum because as last year, Corey Moore, what do you call the terror dome? Welcome to the, the terror dome. When the momentum in this stadium swings towards Virginia Tech in the second half, it takes a big play. It takes a break, an interception or a, a touchdown of some sort to quiet the crowd because right now the Hokies are feeding off of this atmosphere. from the speed state of Florida. They're all over the place, all over the country, these defensive backs. Cluest in Florida, he had good reaction to the ball, Kirk. I like his break. That was very important to break on the ball. Remember Anthony Midget, same high school as Anthony Midget, and also Philip Summers. So they've gone down and had a lot of success down in that high school in Florida. As a Laurie, set to kick. Virginia Tech sets up a return, trying to go for the knockout punch with Davis returning. Kick. 34 14. 
I know the West Virginia guys have gotten it. Did you get the number of that truck? Was it Wayne I, Ward? 32? Yeah, that was Wayne Ward, number Woo 32. Hello. Is there, is there something about this place in the second half of football games? Every time we've come to this stadium, in this second half, Virginia Tech seems to go crazy. Now this, put your seatbelt on at home because this one, this one's going to get a little bit scary. Davis moves over to the right now. Keep an eye on number 45 because he's going to get knocked in the next week by Wayne Ward. Hey, oh, Kyle, he got level. Kyden's the linebacker, but I don't think he's ever been hit that hard in his entire life. And then Davis just uses what an alley. He picks up the speed and he goes a distance. Let's take a let's just go back. If you want to play football, you see what. The, oh. Wayne Ward has had a very good special teams year already for Virginia Tech. Two blocks this season against Temple and East Carolina. Blocked punts. And now maybe the biggest block in a punt situation this year. The block on Kyle Caden. Ouch. At least he, it's good to see that Caden's able to get up from that hit. Absolutely. You know, because that's head sprung back to whiplash effect. He's fixing that helmet. Make sure you get a few more screws on that thing. They may have come loose. <laughs> oh. That's one of the blocks of the year. That's one of the blocks of the year. Oh, goodness. 34 14. Sean Terry. Returns it out to the 22. All right, you guys go everywhere, and I mean everywhere. You have the best job in college football. You go all over the place, atmosphere-wise. This place gets jacked up. What is it? I, it gets crazy in here, and I think that, like I said, I, you, you can see teams feed off their home crowd, and we've been out to Austin Stadium out in Oregon, and I, you'd have to put this stadium up there because of the way I think it affects their team and their defense, and it always seems that it comes time after time, and it happens quickly. Remember last year how quickly their crowd would affect the defense and the special teams? Michelle made a good point before. How, if you're the quarterback, now you have people breathing right down your neck over there on the bench. Run with Coborn, and Avon Coborn gets a first down with a dozen yards. Doc always told me that the Intimidator. Is that? Is it Terminator? You no, know, it's a Terminator. Terminator. You're right. Intimidator. Number three. Yeah. Going with You're three. Right. You're fine. You got the three in the back of the car, Mike? No, I don't. You don't or, have that? But Dale's a great guy. He and is. His son's literally. Dale Jr. is a great yeah, driver. For Dale, I like, I like Getting to back to some football. Yeah, serious, serious, football. serious football. Serious football. Remember when it went fourth down and I said, don't do that? Yeah. It's, it's going to go. Just thought I'd mention it. Second and ten. Knocked down by Nick Sorensen. I think it might have gone. Regardless. No, I don't think so. Let me tell you why. Unless they pin him inside they gave, the five. That's right. right. They gave them the ball with excellent field position. And you don't do that with a football team like Virginia Tech's offense. I think, and I said before, I'm not second guess Don Elon, I'm first guessing. I said, I don't like going for fourth down there. I think you back them up. The score was 20 to 14 right. at that time. It's been Plus ding, it ding, was, ding. The thing that was surprising it was it was six minutes to go in the third quarter. You're down by six points. Yeah, that's why I first guessed them. They made a tough time picking up third downs. Many of them have been third and more than five. Led Sorensen. Caught across midfield by Antonio Brown. Nice catch. Ooh. Had to come back to that football Why he was in the air. I mean, this is a heck of an adjustment to a football that's thrown behind him. Quarterback gets hit as he throws it. Now look at that. Look at that adjustment in the air. Nice grab. The reason why he made that catch is he never took his eyes off the football. He went right there, looked it right into his hands, and brought it right into his body. You, nice love, to, you love to see those receivers catch the ball with their hands it's instead of arms extended. Yeah, instead of with the pads. From midfield. Lewis throw towards Corey Ivy. It's 20 yards the big playmaker for West Virginia. This is deja vu all over again. Number eight, 
Ivy runs the post corner perfect. One right, boom, and he gets number one to turn his back, Eric Green. The reason why that play is so effective is they've been running them on some post routes. They fake the post route and come back, and the quarterback, as you said, very well said before, he throws the ball before he opens. He has that the timing pattern down. The other thing is that young corner, Eric Green, is giving Ivy about eight to 10 yards on most snaps. This time he's gonna come up tight. Lewis in trouble sack. Nathaniel Adibi, redshirt freshman, who physically fits the profile of their great defensive line quarterback sackman, like Bruce Smith. And of course, Corey Moore last year. Adibi has a ways to go to develop, but he's got the body and the physical ability to follow. But Foster feels that between Nathaniel Adibi and Jim Davis, you have Lamar Cobb as a sophomore, Coles Colas, they have, a, they have a nucleus there of about four guys that are going to be around for another three years. And all of these guys are going to be very effective. They get stronger and quicker, better understanding of what Bud Foster wants. They're going to be, that's what this defense needs is, is speed on the edge. After a loss of 11, the quarter ends with this play. And it ends the way the quarter went. Maroon. The defense is stepping up and being more aggressive after the offense. Put up 27 points in the third quarter. Four touchdowns, all big plays, most of them done by the man. Number seven, we've been telling you all along that he's something special. And we're telling you again. The Virginia Tech band doing the hokey pokey third quarter tradition here in Blacksburg. Don Nealon would like to turn the game around in the final 15 minutes. West Virginia, a 27 point pokey onslaught. They start the fourth with third and a quarter of the field. Lewis downfield. Oh. What an interception by Ronnie Whitaker. To the 22 yard line. Pass was intended for Phil Braxton. But Whitaker, second pick of the game and fourth of the season. I'll tell you one thing, that's better than a punt. They've either had the punt blocked or run back. <laughs> that might be their strategy. The Boy, they're going to go for it, right? Throw long interceptions. It's a heck of a catch play. here by Whitaker. Mm. They'd love for him to become the guy out there, the guy that they can count on as being the leader of the secondary and a guy that they can throw on, a talented wide receiver on an opposing team. The last half of last season, they got Whitaker more playing time, played about 30, 35 snaps a game. Stepping into the starting role just fine. Two picks tonight, four on the season, and Michael Vick and company. For a couple, Michelle Tafoya at the end of the third quarter spoke with Frank Beam. Well, Coach, the third quarter looked like a completely different ball game. What enabled such an offensive explosion? Well, there's been some good things. I think he's played on our uh, by our whole team defense, uh, special teams. But we got a big fourth quarter to go here, and you know this thing's way uh, from over. Coach, thanks. Thank you. That interception certainly helping the situation. Virginia Tech scored 28 in the second quarter of the opener against Akron. Other than that, it's been their biggest 15-minute offensive explosion of the season. A little miscommunication in the backfield. <laughs> the first down anyway. Either Suggs or Vic went the wrong way, but Derek get three more plays to try to sort it out. The first down with Andre Davis. A little mix up in the backfield you could tell before the ball was snapped Michael turned back to turn to the backs and said something and clearly they were on the it looked like on the on the wrong page it might have been Michael going the wrong way since both backs went to the left but still that's where he that's what he brings to an offense even though there's a mistake he's able to get to the outside and throw the football downfield for a first down. for a couple of yards. William Perry, the sophomore. Unrelated to the fridge, and this William Perry actually dropped about 20 pounds from last season to this. Now weighs in at 290. Saw Michael adjust the play at the line. So often we say that they're changing the play, but so often now in college football, teams come to the line with a check with me situation. Especially Virginia Tech in this game, because West Virginia moves around so much, they're doing a freeze call to try to get them to show their hand. Hackett was coming on the safety blitz. They went the other way, and 
Emmett Johnson's nine-yard catch. Set up third and about one. Actually, seven yards, beg your pardon. Tell you, that's a tough catch. He's, he's on the, the left hash, and he's throwing into the boundary. This, this ball is coming at about 85 miles an hour. I mean, it is zipped. And watch him go up, Emmett Johnson go up and make the play. That is, that is a great catch. We've seen a few catches tonight by the Virginia Tech receivers. Third and one. Suggs is thrown back. David Upchurch on the nose. Sophomore from Hyattsville, Maryland. In on the stop. Virginia Tech will Put the ball away. So Peasley will come on to kick. Improving on that 33 yard average. Confidence is what they want out of this guy. Matt Nears bringing nine after him. Ran into him. Flag down. Well, that would be 15. It doesn't matter, but that they hit him pretty good. 15 in my book. And it is 15 yards and an automatic first down. And that one looked a little different than the one we saw earlier mm -hmm. go against Virginia Tech. Sure did. It was called roughing, not running into the kicker. First of all, roughing the kicker, gets the defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. West Virginia trying to make something happen on special teams. Trying to make something happen. They bring everybody in there, and you could tell that they brought too much pressure. And so Braxton was back up flailing receiver. at the ball. Yeah. And the difference where the Virginia Tech players, who are so good at blocking kicks, they're coming in really with a chance at the right angle, and this was just kind of flail at the guy. Hmm. Release Suggs. Got it out to the 34. Suggs with another drive or two might get to 100 yards again here in this game. Talked about Michael Vick and the pressure trying to live up to all the expectations and the hype. When I talked to him yesterday after practice, I said, has anything changed as far as not so much your approach but on the field, the players? They all want a piece of you. He said, Kirk, you have no idea. He said, I knew it was going to be bad, but I never knew it would be this bad. He said, in the bottom of the pile, people are coming underneath his face mask, scratching his face, punching him when they get a chance. And I think anybody who's been a superstar at this level, at the next level in the NFL, always expects that. But it's one thing to try to adjust to get used to it. Fullback Jared Ferguson he took it to the 24-yard line for the first down. 12 yards. For the junior has been battling a sprained ankle. This entire second half has been a different feel from Virginia Tech on offense. The rhythm, the tempo, mixing it up, getting to the outside, running up the middle, play action. Michael looks more comfortable in the pocket. I think this is the type of offense that they expect from themselves every single time they take the field. And it's the type of game they needed. Even though they were averaging 450 exactly. yards and 46 points, there was concern it's around like here Steve about the Spires. offense. Right. Remember where you once were, folks. Lee Suggs, they're just running it for five and six a pop now. A little touch for Bama Dave here tonight on Thursday night. Sean Hackett with the tackle of Michael Vick there. That, pa that package is great, oh. especially when you get those uh, four ABC regional games and you yeah, can bounce back from everything. The, uh, this week it's the Michigan game. You can bounce back and forth Kansas State, Oklahoma, whatever game's not on in your area. It's for the knowledgeable fan, the fan that likes to go and be able to compare teams from all across the country instead of being isolated in your region. To the serious football fan. That's right. Third and three. For the quarterback in college football. What a nice shot. First nice. down. Oh, touchdown. <laughs> okay. That's a good sign. I love that. What happens here in this situation where West Virginia takes a strong safety blitz and they get caught 
with Jared Ferguson, who's 5'9", 217. He started 25 games in a row at fullback for Virginia Tech. He's a very solid football player. Ferguson, who's so good at working his body to be a fullback, he has a 36-inch waist, but has to buy pants that are a 40-inch waist because his thighs are so big. That's a fullback. I have that same problem. <laughs> do you? Yes, I do. How Too many you, squats? Sir? Too many squats have been. Scooter's been lifted. Press. Scooter's been lifted heavy. 41, 14. West Virginia's Phil Braxton. Kickoff return to the 30. Be marked down at the 31. If you're just joining us, what Lee was talking about on the punt return for a touchdown in this half, Wayne Ward, backup tailback on linebacker Kyle King. Virginia Tech scoring that punt return in all four possessions of the second half. And with the game out of reach and Brad Lewis's hand injury, a factor, Scott McBride, the redshirt freshman who about noontime today thought he might have been starting in this game, is now in there. No place to go for Cooper Rigo, the running back. Because of the Lewis injury, it was a heavy dose of practice this week for Scott McBrien, the freshman. At DeMatha High School, that great basketball factory, he led them to an undefeated season in football. 13-0, didn't throw an interception, and was uh, nationally ranked 13th. He's only thrown six passes this year, but completed four of them. They like him. They have good future quarterbacks down the line. McBrien is one of them. He's seen mostly mop-up duty thus far this year, although he did have to come in the second quarter of the Temple game <laughs> to lead a drive. There he meets with Nathaniel Adibi. It'll be punt time for the Mountaineers. Now Brad Lewis's numbers don't tell you how impressive his performance was tonight, considering he didn't practice at all all week. Did great effort tonight. Second quarter, he had six for six and took his team in with a 14-7 lead at halftime. Great effort by that young man. Since then, 34 unanswered points for Virginia Tech. Four drives, four scores, one punt return. Punt by Mark Fazalori. Ronyel Whitaker get an opportunity to return. Careful, Caden. Where is he? Look at was not Caden. It's still Whitaker going. And knocked out of the 48-yard line. Head on a swivel there, Mike. Kevin Freeman was the linebacker who was being lined up. 16 yards on the punt return. They invest so much time, effort, and passion in special teams. Virginia Tech and Michael Vett doing it again. The plateau between the Blue Ridge and the Allegheny Mountains, southwestern Virginia. The southwest of Roanoke, we are in Blacksburg, the home of the Hokies and the home of the number two team in the nation. And the number one spotlight player in the sport, Michael Vick. His team leading 41-14. Andre Kendrick there for a couple of yards. Michael Vick, the player, you know. Michael Vick, the person. If there's one defining quality, it's very simple. He was raised by his mom. We have a great relationship, you know, I'm, I feel very lucky to have the mom that I have, you know, um, she's the greatest woman in the world, you know, and uh, like I said, everybody, you know, she's, it's not like she's just, she's my mom, but it's like she's my sister too, you know, because we can, we can talk in a different way, you know, and um, I can talk to her about anything, you know, we joke about everything and she's always joking on me and I mean, it's just, it's just fun to be around her, you know. There is Michael's mom in the stands, anyone who's, uh, been around that mother-son relationship knows how special it can be, but with Michael, it's an even deeper story than that. Here's Michelle Tafoya. Yeah, Mike, with friend of body, uh, Michael Vick's mom, and we just heard him talk about how you guys have to talk every single day. What is so important to you about those phone calls with your son? Um, I just like to talk to him every day and just see what he's doing. I, 
I call them all the time. I know I be, you know, sometimes wearing them, but I just have to talk to them and see what's going on. And in your conversations with him, how do you think he's been handling the pressure this season? It's been a lot different this second year as opposed to last year. He's been handling, handling it real good, real well. And um, he just do what he have to do to help his team win. And um, even if he have to flip or dive or whatever, the, that's the part I don't like, but he handled it real well. Well, you're handling it well too. Brenda Body. thank you very much. Mike, back up to you. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> Brenda's son, Michael, just came out of the game to receive that warm reception from the fans here. Good move by Frank Beamer. Take his quarterback out. Let him get a nice hand. Let him stay healthy. Perfect timing there. That's right. Is Coach hit on that? That was perfect. Just get it done. That's all. The quarterback of the game is Dave Meyer. Great move, Andre Kendrick. Bounces it outside. Running hard. And out of bounds at the three. Smelled that third touchdown instead got 32 yards. Kendrick, kind of the forgotten man. Michael Vick in the second half has been spectacular. He's made a, a number of big plays here. This really got him going in the second half. Slokowski's able to pick up a big touchdown. And this ball had to travel at least 65 yards in the air. Puts it on the money there. And there he's showing his he's a team player. Downfield on the reverse. Even though he didn't get a knockout block, he still gets in the way of Bryant, Richard Bryant, to lead his talented receiver, Andre Davis, into the end zone. Look at the numbers in the second half. And look at the average per reception for his receivers there. Big, big plays here in the second half. Thank you. See that bottom line in. That means Sports Center is right around the corner. And we'll bring it to you as soon as we're done here in Blacksburg. Talk about Michael's mom who drives a school bus in the other part of the state, Norfolk, over by the ocean. Uh, a special relationship in part. Michael's dad was at the time not married to Brenda when Michael was growing up and around. And that's why Michael retained mom's maiden name, Vic, as we told you at the pregame show, the start of the game, just to honor his mom to show the respect for her sacrifices and the importance that she had in his nurturing as a young man. Kendrick with the carry. Lost a yard there. Speaking of Michael Vick, I want all the football fans out there to get a pencil and paper right now and mark down November the 4th. Florida State Clemson, Miami, Virginia Tech. It is possible that the winners of those two games could play for the national championship. Because with Nebraska, Kansas State, and Oklahoma playing each other, yes. Ohio State playing, have to play the helmets in Michigan, the champion could come from that day right there. That's it. And it could be. Could be. Third and goal. Third string fullback. Wayne, Wayne Bridge was carrying. Carries the ball to the Hokies. That's Wayne Bridge. Wayne down took it down to the one-yard one yard line. Goal from Virginia Tech will move to 6-0. and oh. They have... Two home games left, Pittsburgh and Virginia. Three road games left in reverse order at Central Florida, at Miami, the November 4th game, and their next game will be at Syracuse on October 21st, a week from Saturday. Which is a, a, a stadium they always seem to battle in and always struggle in. Whenever they go up to the Carrier Dome, no matter how good they are, it's always a, it's always a fight for Virginia Tech. So even though on paper you look at every game they have to play with the exception of going to Miami, they're going to have more talent than everybody they play. Absolutely. Still, nothing's a, a given. And the Big East is much better this year. The Temple team we talked about earlier. That's right. on the rock. The Temple Owls. In this fourth and goal, Virginia Tech will go for it. Instead of kicking the field goal, and Andre Kendrick takes it over the goal line. Touchdown, Virginia Tech. There's some serious expense on these fireworks. But the, smoke, the smoke's coming in here. <laughs> it's pregame, though. It's seven oh, touchdowns. Yeah. It's a lot. they got to take that into consideration in the budget next year. Well, how do you plan? You know, do you order enough for, well, you're Virginia Tech. You score 46 a game. you got to have at least the opening. you got to take into consideration at least five touchdowns, maybe throw in a field goal. you got to count for at least 48 points. Because Every home game. It's ugly. 
Our Miller Lite storyline tonight from Blacksburg, a Virginia Tech clinic in the second half. Six touchdowns. They went in trailing 14-7. Michael Vick, as solid and complete a performance as he has had all season. Those total yards, as Kirk pointed out during the commercial, he's very keen on the stats, do not include the punt return by Andre Davis. And Brad Lewis was very gritty, playing with a hand injury that did not allow him to practice all week. As Cassell Smith, his first touch of the year, Smith had been suspended for six weeks by Don Nealon. He's back in the sack. Just to let you know how far Virginia Tech football has come and Frank Beamer football has come, they have Beamerball.com, and in 10 days, they got almost half a million hits. Now, you can you can either go to the free page where you have an answer and question for coach. You have uh, feature articles. You can pay about $3 a month and have a pay page that has daily practice report, daily injury report. Did you see what was there? What, picture of us, right? It was us Sitting our meeting. down in a meeting. <laughs> but everything you want, it's Beamerball.com. If you're a Virginia Tech fan, check it out. I'm going to have my agent call for a piece of the action. But he's using us. Scott McBride throws. Complete. Throw to A.J. Nastasi. You may remember A.J.'s brother. He played for Penn State and Joe Paterno. Joe played Penn State for three years. Joe Nastasi played for <laughs> Joe Pa. Frank Beamer. Who's on that list with Don Neal, Coach Paterno, Lavelle Edwards, longest tenure at one school. Chris Fowler said before the game that Virginia Tech needed an impressive performance he did. to be able to maintain their spot in the polls, and I think Virginia Tech coming out in the second half has made a heck of a statement to the nation about how good this team really is this year. Against a good West Virginia team. Sure. There's Don Nealon. He's 21 years in West Virginia, but the best honor I think he's had is Don Nealon was the president of the American Football Coaches Association in 1997, and being a former head football coach, that's the greatest honor you can have when you're Peer groups name you the president of the American Football Coaches Association. Oh, what's your job when you're the a current coach and you're the president? What do you? Hang on a second, we're trying to throw here. Incomplete. No, what well, he, he, represent, he represents the American Football Coaches Association when it comes to lobbying, maybe in Congress. In fact, there's a picture Rules? of Don. It, it, there's a picture of Don with Paul Tagliabue representing the college football coaches with the National Football League. It's a representative position. And it's, you don't do a lot of stuff. It's just a show of respect. But right? it's a show of okay. respect that he came up the hard way. And the, you know what the sickening part about it is? He's had four losing seasons in 21 years. And last year, we were talking, remember, they were given a little touch about leaving. That's right. That's sick. Well, Very that's similar to the George Welch America. situation in this state of Virginia. Coaches who are in their 60s, who have been wonderfully successful, and now in this day of parity, a seven, six win season, and people get a little bit uptight. And they need to forget, you look at the building in Morgantown, the building in Charlottesville, without George Welch and Don Nealon, they don't see those second decks on those stadiums. That's right. Well, look at these guys. This guy is having a losing season. Uh-oh, he's gone. Woo! He's winning. He just lost the game. Forget about him. Oh, right. Don Nealon now, they're trying to force out. George Welsh is going to be forced out. And old Fisher to Barry, it's a good thing it's at the Air Force again. Wait a second. I'm not going to let you do that. I will not humor. let you do that to Bobby humor. Bow. A little humor. But your, your humor does bring up a good point. I mean, we, we kind of forget the second somebody is a little bit yeah. older and doesn't have success, the game's passed them by right away. Exactly. And people forget how long these people have been there and what they've done because they've raised the expectations to bring the heat on themselves. McBride with a big arm trying to air it out. Incomplete for Cassell Smith. You think of a Frank Beamer, and we talked, he had a two-win season not that long ago, and in this day and age, there's no chance that you can win four games a year your first six years and be around for the next eight. And you know why it is? It's, it's the number one thing. When a coach loses, the attendance go down. Any, I tell you what you do. You take every coach in America now that's on the hot seat. If the attendance is down 10,000 per game, the guy's gone. You've because been saying it's, that. It's a money game. You've been saying that for the eight years that I've been covering college football at ESPN. 
first two years I thought you were crazy. Yeah. And you have been exactly right on that. Mike Tirico, you finally seen the light. <laughs> You gotta listen to the guy. No, you know why it is? It's because a woman's athletics now has put the pressure on all of the football teams to raise more money. And if you don't raise money with the tenants, they're gonna get a new coach to see if they can get some more interest in it. Mm -hmm. It's a simple business decision. The Title IX and the scholarship issue that you mentioned there. This is as great a time as they've had here at Virginia Tech, and it's spilled over to the university as well. 4,800, or 4,600, I should say, the spots for new incoming freshmen. We're not talking sports. We're talking in the university. They had 18,000 applications for those 4,600 spots. Fumble the football, and it's picked up. Might be a touchdown for the Mountaineers. Ben Vegan, touchdown. Coming on the play, picked up by number 15, if they get this extra point, and then about score another one, and then another, another two-point play, onside. a lot of people are going to jump right out of the stadium. I'm sure a somewhat Pyrrhic touchdown for Ben Meehan and the Mountaineers. Hey, now. They're a couple three onside kicks away from this thing. No, they're onside kick, a touchdown, and a two-point away from a big thing. John Oliger on for the extra point, which is blocked. Vintage Virginia Tech, remember this, can be returned for a defensive extra point. And Nathaniel Adibi is stopped there, so we'll keep it at 48 to 20 with 2.20 to go. I want to make a statement and listen to this, because I've been around a long time in college football. The greatest turnaround in the history of college football was Bill Snyder taking Kansas State where they were to where they are now. The okay. greatest in the history of college football is Bill Snyder taking Kansas State from the worst team in the nation to where they are now. I make that statement based on my life in college football. And we researched it, went back and look, looked at the entire 1900s last year when we had them for their bowl game. And you can't find a program that was that downtrodden, yeah. worst in the nation, and went to a perennial Top 10. The return by Lee Suggs. They, they have, get out of bounds at the 30 yard and, line. And they have been consistent in staying up there. But the only thing that you're going to find naysayers say is how many championships have they won? That, that would be an argument that people would bring up who are going to be saying that Kansas State is unable to win a championship, being in the, whether it was the Big 8 or now the Big 12. But I think the, the record speaks for itself. They're always one of the best teams in the country. I think with the job that Barry Alvarez at Wisconsin, people forget Wisconsin before Barry Alvarez got there. They were a, a, a team in the Big 10 that people sure. would just go through. And look what he's done in the 90s. You know, he's been able to win three Rose Bowls. Dave Meyer and Virginia Tech from the 30. Running Keith Burnell, tailback who fumbled before, gets only a yard. So Virginia Tech will remain undefeated. And here is the Super 7 right now. Nebraska will play that Texas Tech passing attack. Virginia Tech nine days away from their trip to the Carrier Dome. We talked about three and eight. Clemson will take on Maryland. You'll see that on ESPN2. Michelle will be there along with Dave Barnett. And Mike Gold, Coach Bill Curry. The Ohio State-Minnesota game. What about the Buckeyes? They have a tough road ahead, but still maybe the best in the Big Ten when all is said and done. The Ohio State defense. Oh. The Ohio State defense is as good as you're going to find in the country because of their corner play. Nate Clements, not a whole lot of people talk about. He might be the best cover corner in all of college football. And the other thing is it's an angry football. They are angry because of what happened to them last year, and people continue to doubt them, so they become confident and angry. Those are their two words, and when you combine that with talent, they're dangerous. Isn't it amazing Ohio State is not getting respect? Ohio State, yeah. Kansas State, and Virginia Tech get respect in this day and age of college football, and Ohio State did not. It's been a long night for WVU. Uh, trombone player who was uh, injured during the halftime festivities. Lee's a believer now in Ohio State. Yes, I am. I, when they beat Arizona on a Saturday night, in Tucson, yes. I became a believer. Not Although quite. I, not quite. Not quite. I thought, not quite a believer. I thought Wisconsin would beat them. That's right. With long runs by Michael Bennett. Now but you I like that wrong. defense. That defense that seems defense to be for real. Pretty Keith, good. Keith Burnell runs for the good. first down. Yes, and that should put this one away. West Virginia is in the toughest stretch of its season. In nine days, they will host <laughs> Notre Dame in Morgantown, then play Syracuse in Morgantown. Still have a visit from East Carolina later on in the year. 
road games at Rutgers and Pittsburgh to close the season in the conference. We are off next Thursday night. The NFL will be in our place. Very good game as well. The Lions in Tampa Bay. You'll see the Bucks who need one against the Lions. who've gotten off to a good start. And we will reconvene in two weeks, gentlemen, as Doug Eastlick, the fullback, gets a carry. For Wyoming, BYU, we will see you in Provo in a couple of weeks. Enjoy your week off. And thanks to Michelle Tafoya. We enjoyed having Michelle with us this week. Thank you, Michelle. Great nice job. Nice job, Michelle. Safe travels to Clemson. We'll be watching Saturday night on ESPN2. For the first time this year, they didn't score in a quarter. But the man made it happen. Michael Vick, and then the special teams on top. And when it's all said and done, final score, Virginia Tech 48, West Virginia 20. For Michelle Tafoya, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreit, Mike Tarico. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. You're home for college football on the internet. <laughs>